Trust is cheaper than control, part two, the costs of control. So this is probably the part you expected right off the bat. Here are some of the obvious costs of control. We have to control against people stealing the thing we're putting out there. We have to protect intellectual property, which often turns into overprotecting intellectual property. We have to put out security services uh, to monitor the devices that we've put out there. We have surveillance apparatus, control structures like time clocks, control booths, supervisors, record keeping for all of the above. We have to take countermeasures against the people who are doing bad things to us. We have to engage law enforcement and maybe escalate that. We have to prosecute and file lawsuits. In fact, uh, sometimes in order to create regimes of control, we have to generate new laws. And there's something called the American Legislative Council, uh, ALEC, which is out there doing this in pretty bad ways much of the time. Then we actually have to fund money to our people in Congress by lobbying and contributing to their campaigns in the hopes that they will help us control our industries more, in fact, to, to fatten our coffers. And at the largest scale, there are treaties and agreements, international treaties and agreements, that do this as well. These are some of the costs of control that you probably would think about if you sat down with a, with a piece of paper for a little while. Now, I'll tell you, I'm underselling the actual costs of control by saying this because there's a bunch of other costs of control that we don't really think about. When we design systems based on control of the individual instead of trust, what we get is a loss of trust, a loss of community, a loss of agency, a personal felt sense of agency and responsibility for the task at hand, a loss of genius and creativity, a loss of abundance. We actually lose all these intangibles in the process of trying to create a system that will scale, that will scale predictably and efficiently. Because what we've done is we've handed over all of our institutions to the engineers and the managers and said, build this thing for efficiency and scale, which means control, which often means coercion. And we didn't tell them to pay attention to things like community and trust and relationship and authenticity and all those subtle woo-woo things that, in fact, we kind of demonized and got rid of back in the 40s, 50s, 60s. Now those roosters are coming back to haunt us. So we lose trust, community, a sense of agency, and then we wonder why people don't just go change the world and just go take control and why they don't vote, why students are disconnected, why workers are disengaged. Then, of course, we try engagement strategies or gamification or whatever else, which costs more as well. And it actually isn't productive because it doesn't reestablish a sense of trust, a sense of community, a sense of shared purpose, all those sorts of things. Uh, apropos this loss of abundance, I'll drop a little equation on you that I'll go into in other presentations, but scarcity is often abundance minus trust. A lot of things that we need in the world are in fact abundance, abundant, but what we do is we break trust around the mechanisms for them whether it's food or money or places to live or whatever else, and we create scarcity. In fact, you could argue that capitalism is premised on the creation of scarcity because without scarcity there's no value. I'll go into that in the next, uh, in the next presentation as well. But one last thing I just want to add here, which is that mistrust, designing systems from mistrust, coercive systems, limits behavior. It caps behavior. What you want is everybody just doing the same thing, not a lot of outliers where if you operate from trust and you start by designing for people to trust one another, it just blows the ceiling off. It opens opportunities for people to redesign the system. It brings out the best in people. People meet each other in that space. It's really beautiful. You can see it in all sorts of communities around the world, whether it's open source or unschooling uh, or microfinance or other places where people have started to do uh, things that weren't expected to actually work before. This is part two of Trust is Cheaper Than Control, covering the costs of control. The next segment is about capitalism and trust. This is all part. Uh, you should also see a, a different presentation I did called Architecture is Destiny, because once we've designed these systems and poured concrete and made laws around them, they last a really, really long time. Architecture is our destiny. Uh, this is all part of a larger work called On Trust, which is itself part of a larger idea, the relationship economy. To dive deeper, go to jerrymikulski.com or subscribe to this channel right here. I'm going to continue doing this a lot more. Thanks for listening.